Hi friends. So welcome to yet another session on SAP Success Factors Compound Employee API. And here we are going to talk somewhat about the API enhancements and compatibility. So let me tell you about the focus point of this particular slide. And this is mainly from the perspective of the coding pers persons. So people who are more into the Java coding or some other language, Python or .NET, wherein they want to build up their own middleware in order to support the various integrations with SAP success factors. So there is one thing that is needed to be taken into account is the structure of the SAP Compound Employee API. Now in the traditional world, what we have seen is when we are dealing with the SOAP, Simple Object Access Protocol, SOAP based web services, so in the traditional world, in the and specifically about the traditional Java world, what we were used to is basically create the stub and skeletons. So stub and skeletons are nothing but in layman terms, these are classes which understand what request format needs to be submitted to a particular endpoint and what request uh, or the response structure we would be getting out of that particular endpoint. So in a way, stub and skeleton sort of uh, encapsulated the structure formats and they were able to fill up the values in the Java objects, which would basically can be used up down the line code. Now uh, with SAP compound employee into perspective, and if you go in that direction in order to code the response and the request structure in that particular traditional world sense, then we need to be aware of that. Okay. The compound employee API response structure could be changed based on the request parameters that we supply to compound employee API. To that point, let us go through the uh, slide points here. So in cases of automated integrations, so external applications consuming the compound employee API have to take into account that the API response message type can be enhanced with additional elements and attributes. So here in the compound employee API response could be enhanced and there could be some additional elements that could also be coming in across along with the additional attributes. So the external application must be able to process the extended response successfully. Now the additional elements and attributes can be supplied by SAP success factors and by customer enabling custom fields. So now let's say if you are a sort of in a product based company and you basically are uh, furnishing a product which deals with these integrations, SAP compound employee in API integrations that we need to take into account that based on the customer settings, the values which are outputted by the SAP compound employee API could also be changed because they could have enabled some custom fields, some custom attributes, and even the standard fields could have different data types or the different data type or the different data lengths. So in that case, we should be aware of this particular flexibility that SAP compound employee API exhibits for the configuration, which could be different at various customer ends. Now the API request message type can be enhanced by new processing and query string parameters. For example, an additional parameter for selecting or filtering data. So in case we put up some additional parameters in this SAP compound employee API, uh, then there could be a possibility that, okay, there are some additional elements or some additional segments are coming into the output now, uh, which uh, if you had gone with the traditional approach of stubborn skeleton, which would have enforced us to have a predefined structure at the beginning. So, and now once you get the new elements or the new sections here in, so it might not be able to be um, fitted in that particular stub piece. So we need to be aware of that. So now enhancements of request message types and parameters are always optional, though these are always optional that the client or the submitting or the consumer application want to submit some additional parameters, but these are all the possibilities which are there with the compound employee API. The system does not require the external application to provide optional values and parameters in the request, though the system do not require, but yes, these are the flexibility which are exhibited by Compound Employee API. So the XML element and attribute names are always stable. So whatever are the XML elements, which we'll be seeing in the further, which comprises the structure of the Compound Employee as sections and subsections. So those are always stable and attribute names, which are standard ones are always stable. Technical definitions of data types depend on your specific data model. So in a particular client, the succession data model could have been some different changes wherein the data types could also be changed for some of the fields. This means that data types may change. For example, field lengths can also change. The external applications can rely on XML elements and attribute names, but should not rely on data types. So 
persons from the java coding or who anticipate a fixed structure should basically take this flexibility into account now it is good idea to refer to the api metadata as soon as some changes have been made to the success factors data models in order to ensure all changes are in line with the anticipation so it's a good idea to check the success factors data models or the metadata which is exhibited out of the compound employee object right which we'll be seeing how to explore the metadata in a um, upcoming sessions so now we can also make use of the describe or describe x operations to retrieve the complete list of fields in that particular customer instance which we'll be seeing shortly so friends uh wish you a very happy learning and please stay tuned thank you